Smoking and Diving by Dr. Blanche Andrews, performed by Dr. Franz Cronier. In this edition, we look at the extent to which smoking affects one's fitness to dive and the interactions between smoking and diving. The negative health effects of smoking are of course largely known and it's generally advised that smoking and diving should not be combined. But for some the habit is hard to break. National statistics indicate that 16.4% of South Africans are still smokers. The number of scuba divers who smoke is unknown, but for those divers who do smoke and who have a dive buddy or instructor who smokes, it's worth being aware of the risks associated with smoking and diving. The relationship between smoking, diving and health can be explored by looking respectively at the health effects of smoking, the health effects of diving and the interaction between the two. Firstly, the health effects of smoking. Smoking can damage almost every part of the body. It is associated with lung cancer and cancer of the head and neck, lung, stomach, kidney, pancreas, colon, bladder, cervix and even bone marrow. The chronic health effects associated with smoking also include stroke, blindness, gum infection, aortic rupture, heart disease, lung disease, hardening of the arteries, reduced fertility and an increased risk of hip fractures, all of which obviously also have an effect on the fitness to dive. A smoker's overall life expectancy is reduced by up to 17.9 years as compared to non-smokers. At any age, the mortality in smokers is 40 to 80 percent higher than in non-smokers. Smoking is strongly associated with medical conditions that affect the cardiovascular system and respiratory systems. The link between smoking and lung cancer was evidenced as early as the 1930s by German scientists. And yet the effect of smoking on the lungs encompasses much more than the increased risk for developing lung cancer. The immediate effects of smoking on the respiratory system include impaired ciliary function, which is the clearing of mucus, increased mucus production, persistent coughing, non-specific airway hyperresponsiveness, and decreased physical performance. The cilia are tiny hairs that line the respiratory tract. They move in a coordinated manner to clear mucus and foreign particles from the lungs. Without this function, an individual relies more on coughing to clear harmful substances and phlegm from the airways. Irritants, like smoking, may also predispose individuals to non-specific AHR or airway hyperresponsiveness. This is a tendency for brachial constriction in response to certain substances. That means a tightening of the airways, making breathing more difficult, essentially a minor form of asthma. For a scuba diver with AHR, breathing compressed air released from cylinders, which is colder and drier than normal air, may provoke this bronchial constriction. The same is true for accidental aspiration of seawater or physical exertion. Numerous studies have shown a high percentage of smokers with AHR, and it's suggested that smokers with this responsiveness are at an equal risk or even greater than asthma patients when diving. Increased levels of physical activity require more oxygen to be delivered to the muscles. In those who smoke, oxygen uptake is impaired as a result of the effects of smoking on the lungs. This decreases the body's reserve to cope with more demanding situations, such as those that may be associated with diving. It may include activities like a strenuous walk to the sea when fully kitted, or conducting a shore entry, or when swimming against a current while on the water surface. The long-term effects of smoking on the lungs also include the development of chronic bronchitis and emphysema, which are part of a disease spectrum known as chronic obstructive lung disease or pulmonary disease. The effects of smoking on the cardiovascular system not only affect the heart, but also the blood vessels. The long-term effects of smoking on the cardiovascular system include an increased risk for atherosclerosis, thrombosis and high blood pressure. However, even short-term exposure to cigarette smoke can result in transient vasoconstriction or narrowing of blood vessels. And this again can impair inert gas washout after a dive. Next, the health effects of diving. There are two important systems to consider when diving. Again, the respiratory system and cardiovascular system. 
The main function of the respiratory system is to provide oxygen to the bloodstream and to eliminate carbon dioxide. At rest, the average healthy individual has a breathing rate of about 12 to 15 breaths per minute at an average exchange of about 500 milliliters per breath. That makes about 6 to 8 liters per minute. This results in the delivery of about 250 mils of oxygen and the elimination of 200 mils of carbon dioxide every minute. The primary gas exchange occurs at the level of the alveoli and it's mainly in the movement of oxygen from the lungs to the blood and CO2 from the blood to the lungs. Certain effects are exerted on the lungs when diving. These include an increased stiffening of the chest wall as a result of water pressure, the wetsuit and other gear, increased density of breathing gases as a result of increased pressure, an increased risk of barotrauma or lung injury as a result of pressure changes, and the lungs serving as a bubble trap of decompression venous bubbles. Immersion in water results in a so-called central shift of blood in the body. Other stresses also affect the cardiovascular function such as exposure to cold, increased partial pressure of oxygen and the increased work to breathe itself in addition to the exercise underwater. All of these increase the heart's work rate. So lastly, smoking, diving and health. Optimal functioning of the cardiovascular and pulmonary systems are essential to manage diving situations, both routine and stressful ones. It's also crucial for adequate inert gas removal from the body when diving. Damage to the body as a result of smoking will therefore impair gas exchange, oxygen in, CO2 out, as well as nitrogen or inert gas removal. A study on smoking and decompression illness did suggest an association between smoking and increased severity of decompression illness. A significantly higher severity of DCI was found when comparing light smokers, heavy smokers and individuals who had never smoked. Divers are also at increased risk of acute bronchoconstriction as a result of airway hyperresponsiveness and resulting lung barotrauma. In some cases these may occur simultaneously. An important component of fitness to dive is having physical reserve in order to cope with unexpected additional demands that may be placed on the body in the underwater environment. The ability to adjust to the environment is compromised when the body has been damaged by cigarette smoke. We also mentioned previously that smokers tend to risk more severe injuries. The good news is that many of the adverse effects associated with smoking are reversible after cessation. In other words, it's always worth quitting. The extent of recovery is obviously influenced by the smoking history prior to cessation, as well as the length of time after cessation. When compared to continuing smoking, it is always worth quitting. The risks of adverse health outcomes decrease and may even completely reverse over time. This should be an encouragement to all who are currently smoking and are thinking about quitting as well as ex-smokers who are wondering whether it was worth kicking the habit. It's definitely worth it. The additional margin of safety that smoking cessation affords divers may be compared to the conservative use of dive tables and that's certainly encouraged for similar reasons. In summary then, smoking and diving should not be combined. It's no small irony watching a smoking diver patiently waiting for his or her ultra-clean compressed air cylinder while exhaling a plume of carbon monoxide. Still, encouragement is generally better than ridicule or criticism. Those who do not smoke, but have a buddy or instructor who does, should be aware of these risks and should advise them about them and the benefits of quitting, but should do so in a constructive manner. Most smokers are fairly hardened against the social outcry and isolation their habit imposes on them. Many smokers experience significant guilt and shame, although few would admit it. And so, an accusatory approach is unlikely to be productive. The main focal areas of any campaign against smoking should be health preservation of divers and reducing risks. It is often conducive to honest conversation to simply talk about a smoker's true motivation to quit. 
for those who actually admit they'd like to, there are medications like bupropion or Zyban and varenicline or Champix that may offer significant relief. Obviously, medical interventions come with costs and their own side effects, and we don't encourage divers to continue diving for the period of four to eight weeks while they are on the nicotine replacement medication. Still, the 400 to 600 rands worth of medication and the short-term sacrifice of not diving justifies the long-term gains and health benefits and the financial savings of kicking the habit. If diving is your ultimate goal, then smoking cessation should also be.